Um, that's kind of the focus of your offseason, you know, leading up to when you came back to here, what was things you're working on? Um, you know, a lot of things I had to work on. Um, just getting bigger, stronger, faster, body fat percentage down, just working on uh, different mechanics, just trying to be a good football player in general and just uh, work my craft and just become the best player I can be. So. Do you expect a, you expect a big jump winning from, from your three to your four, but also your one to your two in, in Robert's defense? Uh, Expectations uh, is always going to be there when it comes down to um, just being the player that I want to be and being the person that I want to be because I have tremendous expectations for myself and standards for myself. Um, on the jumps, all I can do is, man, worry about day-to-day, -day, man, just going out there every single day doing OTAs, practice OTAs, um, uh, workouts in, in general, and just be the best player I can be every single day and just give 100% effort every single thing I do and just uh, make sure I just sharpen my axe every single day. So. Look at the additions uh, on the defensive line, but on the, defense, the additions on the defensive line and defense as a whole. Um, the whole team in general, man, has some unbelievable additions. Um, especially on the offensive side, you got the receivers, you got the tight end core, you got the Lake Thomas on the offensive line from San Fran, man. Um, but on the defense side, man, we got an amazing group of guys, man, that came in and just every last one on work, man. That's all you can ask for, just getting better. Each and every individual sharpen their personal uh, tools and just sharpen their personal goals and just compete every single day having fun and um, pushing each other to the uh, to the extreme man and also um, in this time right now where we don't have schemes to focus on games to focus on just learning from each other man we got a lot of new guys a lot of new uh, high caliber rookies in, uh, in and just building that chemistry and that bond with each other that was a huge thing so we've um, seen some guys from your draft class who want to get paid and mm -hmm. maybe know they want to get paid you really kept quiet on that front, mm -hmm. and you were Nicole. Yeah. Why, why was that your approach of not, not trying to say, you know, I want to do contract? Uh, man, I just believe, man, contract going to handle itself, man. Money going to handle itself, man. I play this game for the love of the game, first and foremost. So money is not a big thing on my heart or on my mind right now, man. I just want to be the best football player on the field that I can be, man. Just one of the best football players and uh, do the things I can do to help this team win in general, man. Just help myself win and this team win. So when it comes down to contract, man, that's going to handle itself on its own, man. That's in God's hands. So. You mentioned all the additions um, that just make like offseason. So, how much do you guys feel that you guys close the gap within the division? Um, man, closing the gap, man, is like we we went what two and fourteen, and then we went three and whatever, man. So we, we have a huge gap to close in general, man. And everybody in the organization, everybody in the, on the team know that we have a huge gap to close, man. So it just all falls down to attacking every single day, man. Just doing the best you can do every single day and then stacking each day. And once you stack up each day, man, you're going to be an unbelievable result. So we're not focused on the end goal, just focusing on the process and from day to day right now. So... What are your thoughts on the addition of Solomon Thomas, like yourself, I believe the third pick overall in the draft? Unbelievable player, unbelievable person, man. Solomon Thomas is a, a person who I looked at um, when he was at San Fran especially because he was a much smaller guy playing inside this scheme, uh, interior, exterior, and different stuff like that, man. He brings a tremendous attribute to this team, especially inside our defensive line room when it comes down to effort uh, that he gives, the strain that he gives, the, the techniques that he does, and just the – all around scheme and all around process because he was there with like DeForest Buckner, Armstead, Nick Bosa, that 2019 defense at San Fran. So he can give some uh, amazing advice on the different things that we can attack, the different things that we can see and going against opposing offense that they did in 2019 defense. So, can you think back at all to, to your first, second year in the league and how much different of a player you are and how much you feel you've grown? Uh, I think about it, man. Not not too much later, but I thought about it some time, man. I, I've grown a lot, but I have a lot of a lot of growing space to go, and um, like I say, man, like each and every year, I just gotta grow and be be a be a good player every single year. You see what I mean? So, um, just stacking the years, stacking the days is just the main goal, and just getting better at the one thing to get better at the detail and the small things every single day. So. Is it weird for you, Quinn, to be in your fourth year now? You're one of the veterans around here and, like, seeing these guys come in these drafts. Yeah, it's, it's, it was kind of weird. One of the Rickers was like, yeah, I'm 24. And I'm like, whoa, I'm 24 too. Like, <laughs> that, was, that was one of the one of the weird things. Like, I'm like, oh, man, like, I'm going to my fourth year at 24 and he's a rookie at 24 or 23. So that's one of the probably big things. But, nah, man, I just 
I have a huge ceiling, man, I ain't, and I haven't reached the potential that I feel I can reach yet, so I'm still feeling young. So. <laughs> How good do you think this defense can be now that, you know, the amount of new pieces mm-hmm. you guys brought in? Uh, how good do you guys feel? Every single day, man, we just take a step, man, and stack stack days every single day, man. So the defense can be as good as we we take it. Like it's a it's a player led. Like every single team that wins Super Bowls and different stuff like that, they got unbelievable defense first and foremost. But on that defense, they got unbelievable leaders. And that's the main thing that we're trying to develop and trying to get. Now, we got one unbelievable leader as in CJ. Just everybody else follow him and stuff like that. And just building camaraderie and building chemistry and just working every single day, man, is going to get us to what we want to be as a defense, first and foremost, but as a collective, as a team. So, What's it like putting coming into this a year into the system already, kind of knowing? Mm-hmm. I imagine, like, these OTAs and stuff are a refresher now rather than more comfortable. Definitely. How comfortable is that for you? It's super comfortable, man, especially adding a guy like Solomon Thomas also, who's like, oh, man, DeForest Buckner did this, or Armstead did this, or I did this on this play right there, man. Adding a guy like him, plus uh, one year up under this skin, up under my belt, man, just attention to details and the small things is unbelievable, and especially going to the next level. Um, so, yeah. With the defense, I'm sorry, go ahead. With the defensive end position, that that position being so stacked now with Vinny Curry coming back mm-hmm. and, of course, uh, Lawson and the draft picks, there's a lot of talk that John Frank Lamaris can now move inside on passing downtown. He can do everything. How excited are you to perhaps team with him inside sometimes on passing down? The guys we got in our room, man, there's a lot of guys in our room that's got unbelievable talent, man. Unbelievable get-offs, unbelievable uh, strength, unbelievable work ethic, and and everybody just work extremely hard. So man, having a guy like John Franklin Myers who can rush from the edge at the elite level, rush from the inside at the elite level, man, just to have him on my team is a blessing for the team itself, but a blessing for me that he can do both at the elite level. So him moving inside, him being outside, is just it's just good to have him on the team. So like, it doesn't matter where he's lined up, he's going to dominate wherever he lines up. So. Going, going in line with that, Quinn, and this is something that Robert talked to us a lot about last year. So he prefers that defensive line rotation, you know, constantly have guys in and out so that when you're on the field, you can always give it 100%. Mm-hmm. As a player, do you appreciate that? And, and did you experience that last year that maybe not playing 100% of the snaps allows you to go you know, kind of maximum effort every play sort of thing? Yeah. Like, Coach Solomon is an amazing leader, first and foremost. He has an amazing um, defensive mindset, man. So I definitely trust him and his ability to coach and different things to do, um, no matter what it is. If he asked me to play 100% of the snaps, I trust him that he put me in the best position to the best, be the best player that I can be and to maximize my talent that uh, to be maximized. So whatever he lines up and do and say, um, we all going to follow because he's an amazing leader and he's that showed that his scheme and his uh, techniques work. So. Quinn, a little earlier this afternoon, Vinny Curry was in here. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious how you look at a teammate who went through so much last year. He mm-hmm. told us about the blood clots, the blood thinners, that kind of thing. Um, and he's now back on the football field. How, how, how do you put any of that in perspective? Oh, he's an unbelievable person and, and first and foremost. Like, even like last year, he was going through what he was going through. Um, we all pray for him. We all still talk to him. But he was still a a dialed-in leader at the end of the day. Like, he's a he's a veteran, of course, and where we all want to be as young players at the 11th, 12th year in the NFL and won the Super Bowl and been around many pro bowlers and all pros and help teams, help the Philly especially go to, like, the Super Bowl and um, stuff like that. So having him in general in the room is, like, phenomenal. But he was always there. Like, even, like, he was at home last year going through what he was going through. He was always attentive, always giving us advice, always telling us what he's seen on TV. So – he was there, but he wasn't there. So it's like he's always been there. So we talked um, a lot about you and what we think you're, you know, what you think you're capable of, mm-hmm. right, brother? Kind of going into his second year with this defense. He's an amazing player, um, first and foremost, man. Fast, strong, athlete, man. But just like everybody on the team, man, we all got some stuff that we got to clean up, first and foremost, and um, got all got stuff that we got to. Um, Gain about all got goals, all got expectation, all got um, attributes that we have to to uh, maximize. So that's one of his things, man. That he he got to just maximize his um, goals, maximize his attributes and stuff like that. So and just like I say, man, work and stack the days and get better every single day. So. You got to get his own place this year, huh? You got, does he have to get his own place this year? Not crashing with him anymore. No, nah, he lived he lived by himself last year. Oh, okay. Like he lived, he always lived by himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he never lived with me. <laughs> no, yeah. 
Wife, 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 Nick's that one? Yeah. No, my wife, first of all, my wife wanted him over there in general because she was like, oh, you save money and stuff like that. So, but <laughs> nah, he, man, like, he, he, he's. He's an alpha, you know what I'm saying? I'm an alpha, so it's like <laughs> you want you want your own space as an alpha. You see what I mean? You want your own kingdom, basically. So it's like I wouldn't rush him out or nothing like that. So, 